All right, David Harry here. So if you're thinking about buying an M4 Pro Mac Mini specifically for working with DaVinci Resolve, I would strongly recommend that you watch this entire video because like in a second, I'm going to show you in great detail a reproducible crash scenario whereby the M4 Mac Mini or the M4 Pro Mac Mini here hangs and then completely crashes out of Resolve when doing some exposure. Now, just before I show you this example, I'm just going to explain something really quickly. So before I bought this Mac Mini, I had already set up like a few scenarios which I could quickly test between the Mac Mini and my older M1 Max MacBook Pro. And these tests were very specifically for me to get a very quick idea as to the processing differences between this Mac Mini and the M1 Max MacBook Pro. Because of course, you know, I want this to be more powerful than what I had been using for the last three years. So what I'm gonna show you now with this test is just one test, which was really designed for me to determine something quickly, but as to like whether there was, there was any differences between these two systems. So what I'm gonna do is play you this, and then I'll come back at the end and just do an ultra quick summary. Okay, so the first thing that I am going to do is to quickly go through the specifications for this computer, just so that we know exactly what's going on. So as you can see here, it is a Mac mini, it is an M4 Pro. It's got 14 CPU cores, which is the 10 performance and 4 efficiency, and it has 48 gigabytes of RAM. Now, by extension to it being the 14 core variant of the Pro CPU for M4, as we will see here with the graphics, this has got 20 GPU cores. So that is the basic specification dealt with there for this particular Mac Mini. Now, just interestingly here on the desktop, as we will see, there are three MOV files here. Here. Now these are incomplete MOV files, basically these are broken MOV files and the reason why they're broken is because they are the first three attempts that I made to export from Resolve. So all three of these are broken because Resolve crashed during the exporting. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is just launch into Resolve. Okay, let me just go full screen on Resolve here. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do in Resolve is just to show you things like the setup for the media and also the project settings. So with the media selected in the timeline here, as we can see through the inspector, this is Apple ProRes 422HQ as far as the, uh, the codec is concerned for the video. Now the frame rate is 119.88. So that essentially is 120 frames per second for NTSC. So 119.88 is an NTSC frame rate, but it's essentially 120. So what we've got here is resolution, which is 7680 by 4320, and that is 8k uhd now linear pcm for the audio doesn't come into play for anything here because you know this crashing i'm going to assume is due to video and not audio okay now as far as the actual file is concerned that's everything done in fact let me just put my io markers on there now <clears throat> just interestingly as well the file actually plays brilliantly in the timeline and i can actually do uh, like you know assembly editing with these types of files and stuff being essentially 8k 120 frames per second so as we'll see here watch this i'll do some scrubbing in the timeline and for want of a better phrase that was buttery smooth now if i just play it as well in the timeline as we will see it'll play perfectly in fact, on the point of playing perfectly, if we have a quick look up here, we're going to see a frame counter. That frame counter is actually the buffer for the timeline. And as we will see, that will fill up and hit the maximum buffer, uh, which is what is equal to the frame rate of the actual media in the timeline. So just watch that again. Okay, so as you can see there, no problems at all playing that whatsoever. However, what you may have noticed is the actual preview here was nowhere near 60 frames per second, let alone 120. Now, that is something else that I'm going to have to do a video about. But nonetheless, the actual clip itself is playing properly, but the preview isn't. So that's for another video. I will not get bogged down with it in this video. 
Okay, now if we just come to the settings here, the project settings, which are going to be reflected into the sequence as well, are identical to the source media. So once again, it's basically 8K, 120 frames per second, or more precisely, 8K UHD at 119.88 frames per second. Okay, so that's all the information to do with the media and the timeline settings and stuff. So let me just jump into the exporter. Okay, so in the exporter here, let me just quickly run through what's going on. So I've got um, a file name called test4, which is what I'm going to call this file for the export. And then coming further down here, it is a QuickTime file, or more precisely, it's a .mov file. It's H.265 for the video codec. Now, as far as audio is concerned, I'm just going to use AAC. It doesn't matter. Uh, this is definitely not an issue to do with audio or anything. And the audio that I'm choosing here for the export is fine for this type of export also I'm just going to put this straight to the desktop as well now as you can see here resolution is exactly the same as the source and the project which is 8k UHD and the frame rate is exactly the same as well as the source and the project which is 119.88 now as far as the bit rate is concerned I would normally use a fairly high bit rate for my exports however I'm just going to leave this on automatic now as far as like optimizing for speed is concerned I've got that switched off because this is how I would normally do my exports. Now I'm using main 10, which means that it is going to be a 10 bit output, regardless of whether or not that is even needed for YouTube or SDR is irrelevant. It's just for like, you know, the purposes of this particular export. And then I've got multi-pass encode switched on. So what I'm going to do here is to just add that output to the render queue and then let me just get into the render now what i did find for like my first three crashes was that the first pass was fine and the crashes occurred during the second pass in fact as we can see here from these last two jobs in the media queue here or in the export queue we can see that the crashes did occur at these points here so 18 percent and 96 percent i mean they were actually 18 percent during the second pass and 96 percent during the second pass as well so basically the crashing is occurring in different places so it's not something associated with one particular part of the, the you know the source media or anything now what I'm going to do here is to just speed through this and then I will come back in uh, at some point during the second pass once it is crashed Okay, so I seem to have got my crash on the first pass this time. Okay, so that's weird. Uh, the previous three had crashed on the second pass. So, yeah, this isn't... Okay, right, what it is, my ninja will have stopped recording momentarily just then. Uh, the reason why is because the video signal gets disrupted from the HDMI output of the Mac after it does the crash. But what you should have seen just then is as I was talking, the screen went black. That's when the ninja would have cut off because obviously it's lost sync with the HDMI output. But now as we can see, it went straight to uh, like, you know, the, the what's name the login page here so to be clear it crashes straight back to the login page it doesn't crash to like exit the mac completely it comes straight back to the login page here so let me just log in okay so i've just logged in and it's oh it's just relaunch and resolve again <laughs> okay but nonetheless as we could clearly see there it totally crashed out and again on, on the desktop as we can see there is test4.mov which is the file that i just tried to export so along with the previous three uh, exports test4 is also like crashed and obviously that file won't work in fact let me just try and double click the file as we can see the document test4.mov could not be opened it's basically it's an incomplete file it's crashed uh, so there is four examples straight one after the other where this crash has occurred and what was weird was or not not so much weird but what's now kind of thrown another fly in the ointment is that uh, test4 crashed on pass one which is the analysis pass the previous three had all crashed on the second pass, which is the encode pass. So I can't even say for sure, you know, that it's like an encode 
issue because it wasn't encoding when it crashed on the fourth one anyway that will do for this part of the video okay so to an end summary and this is going to be quite quick because the point of this video was already being made during that testing that i've just shown you there which quite clearly showed the crash scenario now i did say from the outset of the video that i wanted to explain just a little bit more about the m1 max here so what it was i'd already built up like a few different tests that i could do quickly to see what the differences were between the mac mini so the m4 pro and my macbook which is the m1 max and hopefully those tests were going to show me like a clear advantage to use in the m4 pro now what you've just seen there within that crash scenario that was actually one of the tests that i was going to do and it was it was probably actually the first one that i was hopefully going to do on this channel to show people the differences between the two computers and that this one was hopefully going to be like noticeably better now what you've got to understand here is that that media that i used was actually all generated from the m1 max so the reason why i didn't do any comparison to show you that the m1 max could do the job was because it created all of that media and indeed i was exporting h265 variants as well as uh, like you know the hq files and stuff like that i also did a ton of other stuff as well which were all derived from the same files but like I say, ultimately, it was all done on the M1 Max. Now, for anybody who's wondering how I got like 8K, 120 frames per second footage, um, optically, it is not 8K. What it is, it was actually 1080 stuff. It was basically PS5 footage recorded at 1080, 120 frames per second. And then I just upscaled it to 8K from within the M1 Max. And the reason why I did that was so I physically had media, which was like, you know, proper 8K, although optically it obviously isn't it was originated at 1080 but the upscale is irrelevant the actual final clip is 1080 sorry is 8k 120 frames per second but like i say the whole thing was all made up and generated by the m1 max so that had already done all of the heavy lifting and all the donkey work and it was a just meant to be a clear case of Let's just throw it into this thing and just see how quickly it could do it and see if it was going to be that much faster than what the M1 Max was. But unfortunately, as we could see, total crash scenario. Now, there was one other thing that we've seen inside that example there, and it is something that I'm going to have to look into and do another video about. And that is that the preview wasn't playing even in 60 frames per second. I, don't, I didn't expect it to play at 120 because I can't record 120 for the screen grab, but nonetheless, it wasn't even getting on to 60 so temporally it was all over the place now you know for the power of this machine that should be playing those previews exactly spot on for whatever the refresh rate is of the monitoring but it clearly wasn't and um, so yeah i don't know what's going on there and i don't know what's causing the crashing now at this point i'm not prepared to start guessing on anything and if i've got to be dead honest I'm, you know, I just don't have the time for it. You know what I mean? I've bought something which needs to be a workhorse for me. And the last thing that I need to be doing is whilst I'm making like my YouTube videos is to be testing something and try and working out why it's doing it. And then, you know, trying to like narrow things down and, you know, and all that. I just don't have the time for it. So, so far, this has been pretty... Um, pretty disappointing to say the least anyway i've got a laugh otherwise i'll only end up crying because i spent a lot of money for this but there's a fair chance it might have to go back to apple because if it's not going to do at least what this can do then or, or basically if it's crashing it's of no use to me anyway i'm going to leave it at that um, i'll see where to get up to with these things and i'll let people know more details as i do more testing in different scenarios but let me know in the comment section what you've thought of this and if you've liked the video please do give it a thumbs up a sub to the channel would be absolutely awesome i'm david harry thank you very much for watching this video take care and goodbye now